It's uh, Sydney Shima, and he's all the way from Kenya. And he's going to be talking to us about the avifauna of Kenya, the birds of Kenya. Over to you, Sydney. Thank you so much, uh, Megan. Uh, and thank you for everyone who's tuning in right now. So I'll just share my screen. So I hope everyone can see that. Uh, yes, we can see. Okay. Uh, so today I'll just I'm just going to talk about like an, a general overview of like the birds of Kenya, the 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 different uh, bird communities and like the overall uh, an overall look at what the bird life is for this country. Just kind of for the people on this forum who are not so familiar with Kenya or with East Africa. Um, the ones who are a bit more familiar with Kenya might find might not learn so much, but um, I think it might. Um, I hope people will enjoy this. So, just a quick introduction. Uh, Kenya is about 580,000 uh, square kilometers in terms of size. So, it's it's a um, fairly fairly uh, large country. Uh, average in if compared to other African countries, it's not um, anything too notable, but it's a good size. And here are just some major um, features that we have in the country, just to give you some background. So the, one of the biggest ones is the Rift Valley, which cuts through the country from north to south. So it basically, um, it, it almost dissects it in two. And um, the Rift Valley itself has many different features associated with it. So there's many uh, lakes, many of our big Rift Valley lakes. Lake Turkana is one of the biggest saline lakes in the world. It's up there in the north. Um, we have uh, Lake Baringo, Bogoria, Nakuru, Magadi. Um, at, the, at, the, at the border with Tanzania, we have Lake Natron, where, which is a major breeding site for, for lesser flamingos. Um, we also have Lake Victoria to the west uh, on our border with Uganda and Tanzania. So that's that's one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the world. It's actually the biggest in Africa, the biggest freshwater lake. Um, we have several big mountains. Um, many of them are again associated with the Rift Valley. There's Mount Kenya and the Abadeas in the center. Uh, the Mau Escarpment, which is also on the on the western side of the Rift Valley. Uh, we have Mount Elgon on the border with, with uh, Uganda, which is over 4,000 meters high. Mount Kenya, by the way, is the second highest mountain in, in Africa. Only Mount Kilimanjaro is higher, which is just down here, just below the, the border with Tanzania. Um, we have uh, the Cherangani Hills, um, Mount Mtelo in the west, and a few other scattered mountains all over the country. Uh, things like Mount Marsabit and Mount Kulal in the north, um, Mount Nyiru, the Chulu Hills. And then uh, towards the, the, the east, we, we have the coastline, which is 1,400 meters, I mean, 1,400 kilometers long. So it's not quite as long as Somalia's, which is like the longest coastline in Africa, but it's a decent, it's a decent length coastline. Um, and then in between the coast and the, and the highlands, we have a huge area of flat kind of thorn bush country, which is not doesn't have so many big physical features, and that that takes up a huge chunk of the country. So, in terms of birds, um, we have at least 1,100 species documented in the country, and the bird taxonomy is a very complicated thing. So, depending on which uh, authority you look at, you you see different numbers. So these are just like five of the major authorities. The first four are big, uh, the big global authorities with the IOC, uh, BirdLife, Clements, and Howard and Moore. So these are the four main global authorities on, on bird taxonomy. And you can see they all have different numbers in terms of total species and total number of endemics. And then we have the African Bird, bird Club uh, list. Um, and 
again, depending on which authority you look at, we, we have either the second or the third longest list of birds in Africa. So up, up until not so long ago, it was generally agreed that Kenya has the second longest list. Number one in Africa is, is the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's uh, over 1,200 species, I think. They have the biggest, uh, the, the highest number of species. And then second is Kenya, but depending on which authority you look at, um, Tanzania, Tanzania could also be second and Kenya third. So recently there's been many different splits of different species that, you know, birds that were subspecies being uplisted to species. And in Tanzania, many of those have become species. For example, the white eyes, we previously had, I think, four species of white eye in East Africa, and now we have 11 species. So you can see things like those are happening with many different groups of birds. But still, you know, this just shows you um, in general how rich Kenya is in terms of bird species. We have about 850 residents, um, about 130 Palearctic migrants, and then about 30 of our species are migrants from within Africa or from Madagascar, and another 90 of them are just you know, rarities and vagrants, you know, birds that have been recorded maybe once or twice, or, you know, that are not seen, some have not been seen since the 1960s and so on. We have 68 important bird areas, which these days are now being called key biodiversity areas. Uh, and one stat which I find quite impressive is that we have more species of raptors than any other country except for Ecuador. So this is global. So we have 76 uh, diurnal raptors and 16 nocturnal. The nocturnal ones are of course the owls. And um, you know, raptors are generally, each species of raptor is more or less on, on top of its own food chain. You know, they each have, you know, some of them are specialists of hunting birds, others uh, are mammal specialists, some are fish eaters. Um, and of course, there's, there's a few generalists and a few scavengers and all that. But in general, if you have like a big uh, number of raptor species in, a, in an area, it's an indication of quite a rich biodiversity overall. So I think this is quite, this is an indication of just how rich in biodiversity overall this country is. And I don't think that's something that many of the Kenyans actually appreciate. And it's something we should we should really promote more and make more people in the in the public aware of it. So um, we have one of the main reasons for this is because Kenya is actually situated in an interesting spot. So apart from being on the equator, which is the most productive zone on the planet, we are also on the boundary of six major biomes, which is a biome is basically a a community of animals and plants, a unique assemblage of animals and plants that are unique to an area. So there are six of Africa's major biomes actually intersect um, where Kenya is. So we have the Somali Maasai biome, which is the dry thorn bush and, and you know, dry savanna kind of semi-arid biome that dominates the Horn of Africa, which is mainly Somalia, Ethiopia, and up towards Djibouti and Eritrea. And then we have um, in the center and, and the west and, and many mountains scattered around the north, uh, part of what we call the Afrotropical Highlands. So these are mainly above, above 1600 meters or so. Um, then of course we have the coast, we have the, the um, Lake Victoria Basin, and Another interesting one is the Guinea-Congo forest. So this map doesn't show it so well, uh, but actually a, a bit of the Guinea-Congo forest gets into Uganda and to the western extreme of Kenya. And this is another very interesting one. And we also get a bit of the Sudan-Guinea savanna, which is mainly a North African biome. It, uh, it just gets into, the, into Kenya in the northwestern part of the country. And uh, we also get on this map, again, it doesn't show it, but we also get a few species from the Zambezian um, savanna, which is mainly a Southern African uh, biome. So this, each biome has its own unique assemblage of species. So that's, that's one reason why you would expect such a high, a high diversity 
in in such an in a in a small area. So just to give you a few examples of some of the main some of the indicator species for each of these biomes. So for the Somali Maasai biome, there's quite a few of them since it's like the main dominant biome in the country. The, there's the Somali ostrich, which is quite a unique um, ostrich with blue legs, blue blue neck, and a reddish bill. This is quite common in the northern parts of the country. We have Novonda Deccan's hornbill here, which is quite common. The Eastern Chanting Goshawk. This is like the the East African version of the of what you guys call your pale chanting goshawk in Southern Africa. And I think in towards West Africa, there's the dark chanting goshawk, which we also get in Kenya, but the western part of the country. Um, there's a pygmy batis, which is this one here to the bottom left. Um, the vulture and guinea fowl is this this very unique looking guinea fowl with a head that looks like a vulture because it's it's almost bald. Very, very interesting birds when you when you see them in the field. Um, we have the golden breasted starling, which is a very beautiful bird to see, and several larks, including this pink breasted lark, which is blending into the red soil habitat here. So um, then another major biome is the Afrotropical Highlands. This one mainly dominates the central part of the country and also um, parts of the west and parts of the north where we have big mountains. So uh, Takazi sunbird is quite a common bird here we get in, in central Kenya. Um, it's a highland, highland forest, forest edge bird. Um, we have this moustached green tinker bird here which is a nice forest specialist species. Mountain buzzard, another highland forest bird. Um, the moorland chat, this one is more of a, more of a open moorland and, and grassland above, um, above 3,000, 3,500 meters. And then the heartlobe sturaco, very beautiful bird. This is actually almost endemic to Kenya. It's mainly uh, its range is almost entirely in Kenya, but we also get a few um, in northern Tanzania, just south of the border. And this one, some people have suggested that it should be the national bird of Kenya, <laughs> because um, it has, if you look at it, it, has, it actually has like all the colors of the flag. So it has the white, red, green, and black. This isn't really black, but it's almost black on, 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 at the top of its head. So those are actually the colors of the Kenyan flag. So, and the fact that it's almost endemic to Kenya. So many people have suggested it should actually be the national bird. The East African coast, this is one of my favorite places to go birding, a really, a really interesting part of the country. Um, Tiny green bull is one of the, the special, uh, I only just saw this bird last year. This was last year was my first time seeing this bird. And this is one of the smallest green bulls in, in Africa. I think it's pro, it might be the smallest, I'm not sure, but it's, it's definitely one of the smallest. It's restricted to um, southern Ke the coastal uh, forests of Kenya and northern Tanzania. Then we have Sokoke pipit, which is another endemic to Kenya and northern Tanzania. Very nice bird to see. Um, Green-headed oriole, another beautiful bird. White-eared barbet, this one is fairly common in some places. And the coastal cisticola, which was actually just recently split from the winding cisticola. This used to be a race of winding cisticola, but now it's, it's, uh, it's been split. Then the Guinea Congo forest. So this is the, the far western extreme of the country, mainly from um, just north of Lake Victoria. We have Mount Elgon, Kakamega forest, the Nandi forests, and coming down towards uh, a, a forest we call Transmara which is just above the Maasai Mara. There's an escarpment called Ololo escarpment on the western edge of the Maasai Mara. And just above it, there's a beautiful forest there, which is currently actually under threat. But um, yeah, so that's, that's part of what comprises this particular biome. And you'll get things like yellow-billed barbet, which is this one to the top right. Very, very beautiful bird. 
great blue turaco. This is the biggest turaco in Africa. Um, it's an incredible bird to see. I've only seen it once last year in December when I went to uh, Kakamega Forest. Very, very nice bird. Um, joyful green bull, this one here, the yellow bird. Uh, black and white cast hornbill. These are very big hornbills with big, uh, big casks, very similar to the silvery cheeked hornbills, for those of you who are familiar with them. And there's the Lather's bushrake, or Lather's bushrake. Um, another nice bird to see. And then around uh, the, the, the big lake, of course, it's Lake Victoria Basin. There's uh, another assemblage of birds there that are unique to that particular region. There's the Papyrus gonolet. This is a very beautiful bird here. Um, this is mainly a, a, a special of the, the Papyrus swamps. You won't really find it in any other habitat. There's another gonolet, the black-headed gonolet, which is a bit more, um, you find it outside of the Papyrus and all that, but this one is specifically in the Papyrus. You get the red-chested sunbird. This is a nice black sunbird with a red chest. Then there's a few other species. I haven't really managed to get photos of them, but things like Caratha cysticola. This is another one that you get in the papyrus, papyrus yellow warbler, of course, in the papyrus, papyrus canary. Um, things like white winged warbler and a few, a few other uh, specials for that region. Then in the northwestern corner of the country, which is um, a place many people don't really go. We get the Sudan Guinea savanna just creeping into the country. So this bird on the right, the Piapiak, is one of the most interesting birds because it's actually a crow that behaves like a, like a cattle egret. So they actually follow the big herbivores, both domestic and wild. So that includes cattle, buffaloes, elephants, and all that. And they'll do exactly what cattle egrets do, which is they'll follow them and they'll, they'll pick up the insects and small animals that are disturbed as the, as the big animals are, are moving through the grass. And sometimes you'll see them perched on top of the, the herbivores and all that. So I, I found them very, very amusing to watch. Then we have this Abyssinian ground hornbill, very, a very nice bird. This is basically the North African version of the Southern ground hornbill which I'm sure most of you are familiar with in South Africa. There's the fox kestrel, which is a type of falcon. Um, that many, you mainly get it in the desert type, you know, semi-desert kind of uh, savannas, which is just to the west of Lake Turkana. That's, that's the main place you get them in Kenya, yeah. or the areas around Lake Turkana, rather. And then there's the black-bellied firefinch, which, um, is mainly just north of Lake Victoria, you get them. I've never actually seen them before. I've never seen the fox kestrel either, so I'm hoping I'll, I'll get to see them soon. I went to Turkana last year, um, no, in 2018 actually, and I was hoping to see them, but I didn't, I wasn't lucky, but I'm sure I'll get them soon enough. Then there's the, the Zambezian savanna. So this is not really a major biome that we get in Kenya, but we do have a few species that that are from that biome that we get in, in, in the country, mainly in the south. So things like the red-necked sparfowl, which is this one on the right, you, you get them in the Maasai Mara. I think that's the only place you can see them, which is the southwestern part of Kenya. I'm sure many of you know the Maasai Mara because it's quite famous for the wildebeest migration. Then there's the southern ground hornbill, this bird on the Bottom left, I'm sure almost in everyone from South Africa watching knows this bird. This is actually the bird of the year for BirdLife South Africa for 2020, if I'm not wrong. Very, very nice bird. It's the biggest hornbill we, we have in Africa and probably in the world. It's quite a big hornbill and it walks around on the ground like a, almost like a secretary bird. Very, very nice bird. Shallows Turaco is another one, which is a Zambezian species. And then, of course, there's many, there's many other birds that don't really fit any particular biome. So you would call them generalists. So these are things like the martial eagle, which you get pretty much all over Africa, lilac-breasted roller. 
uh, there's there's many people who actually think the lilac breasted ruler is the national bird of Kenya, but we actually don't have a national bird. Um, we don't have an official national bird, but at some point in history, somebody decided the lilac breasted ruler was the national bird, and that has kind of gone around in the tourism circles and all that. So these days you'll see even like, um, you'll see major um, organizations and even the Kenya Wildlife Service and all that calling it the national bird, but it's actually not, but it's still a beautiful bird. You get them all over Africa. You get Egyptian goose and Haddad ibis, I'm sure everyone knows these. African schema, these ones are not so common in Kenya. So when we see them, we get excited, but they're quite widespread in Africa. Um, I think they get up to the to Egypt even, along along the Nile River. Um, then there's various seabirds. I haven't done much pelagic birding at all. So I've seen very, very few seabirds in my life, but there's a few here, like these are lesser crested and greater crested terns. Greater Crested Tern is also called Swift Tern. I think that's the the name some people are familiar with. Then there's this, the, the bird here to the top left is a Sooty Girl. So this was at the coast. Um, then we get things like lesser and greater frigate birds, tr uh, white-tailed tropic birds. Uh, we get various species of um, skewers, uh, noddies, um, what else? um you know all sorts of different seabirds um storm petrels i think we get um black browed albatross and another species of albatross i don't remember so i've never really most of those i've never seen but i'm hoping to do a, a pelagic trip sometime not so long from now and try and tick some of those our pelagic birds are not nearly as impressive as what you guys have in, in South Africa, especially south of Cape Town, but we have a fair share of, of seabirds. Then we have about 11 endemics. Um, Heinz Babla is this one to the top right. This is central Kenyan endemic. Kilifi weaver is um, at the coast, only found in Kilifi County, one county. So it's nice. We gave it a, this name in the newest checklist. It used to be called Clark Weaver, but I think giving it this name makes it better because people actually identify with it and it's easier to advocate for its conservation. If you have, you give it a name of a local, of the local county that it's endemic to. Sharp's long claw, this is found in the, the highland grasslands, mainly in central Kenya, but also on, on Mount Elgon. But on the Kenyan side, it hasn't yet been recorded in Uganda. So for now, it's still a Kenyan endemic. Um, Abadea cysticola, this is from the Abadea Mountains and the Mau Escarpment, Central Kenya. Williams Lark, this is mainly in the deserts in the north, around Master Beat and Isiolo. Taita Palis, Taita Thrush, Taita Waitai, these are from the Taita Hills in the southwest. Kikuyu Waita is this one here, this is a Central Kenyan one. Um, Kulal Waita is from the north near near Turkana on Mount Kulal. Snowy Barbet, this is just recently split from white-headed Barbet. This is central Kenya. Then there is um, Tana River Sisticola. This is from the Tana Delta. This one is actually in question because some people um, say that it's probably not a, a legit species. We only have seven specimens of it in history. It's not been seen since the 1970s. And some people say it might have just been a, a variation of the rattling cysticola, or possibly um, a hybrid between rattling and ashy cysticola. So that's that's like a it's a mystery. No one really knows if it if it really exists. Then just to give you an overview of, you know. In terms of the Kenya bird map, how how that how these biomes are covered so far. So we have 93 species at last so far in full protocol cards, and then uh, if you look at the distri the distribution of the coverage, the best covered areas are the Afrotropical highlands, as you can see, the central part of Kenya, um, going towards the west, some of the mountains in the north as well. Um, the East African coast is quite well covered, like Victoria Basin. Um, not as covered as as well covered as the highlands, but it's getting there. 
the Guinea Congo forests as well, places like Kakamega and Nandi are getting quite well covered now. And then the big gaps are mainly in the Northwest. So this is mainly the Sudan, Guinea, Savannah. This is just west of Lake Turkana. You can see how blank this area is. So very poorly covered. So we know very little about how the species are doing in this part of the country. And then there's the Somali Maasai biome, which is the east, the entire east and north, almost the whole north and east is that particular biome. And you can see how blank it is. And it's mainly because uh, the eastern part of Kenya near, near Somalia and going up towards the Ethiopia border, there's a lot of hostility there. So it's not so safe to go there. So, and, and there's a lot of, it's a big parts of these areas are also remote with very few roads. So it's really not an easy place to access. But because that biome covers such a big part of the country, we still have many records from the Somali Maasai biome, this in the, in the South, especially in Southern Kenya. So thank you very much uh, for listening. If you, you can learn more about the Kenya bird map by going to our website, kenya.badmap.africa. And if you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Just search for Shots by Shema and you will see me there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sydney. That was really, really interesting. There are so many amazing birds in Kenya. <laughs> I wish I could just uh, jump on a plane right now and go and go visit. Um, thank you for a really wonderful talk. Um, we're quite a ways over the time limit. Um, I'm not sure, Les, uh, if we should take questions or... I think let's take a few questions, sure, sure. Okay. I see there was this one scroll up a bit. Oh, so so Zandra wanted to know if the Abyssinian and the southern ground hornbill um do they share territories? Um and like are there areas where they overlap? Um and oh and do they has there ever been records of them like interbreeding? Well, as f they're, they're, they're very closely related, but as far as I know, they're not, they've never interbred. So they're both in the same genus, but as far as I know, there are no records of them interbreeding and um, they don't really overlap. The Abyssinian ground hornbill is mainly in the northwest and then the, the southern ground hornbill is in the south near the Tanzania border and it comes up towards Nakuru, which is in the central Rift Valley. But as far as I know, they don't really overlap. Maybe historically before a lot of the, the habitat in the West was converted into agriculture and all that, and a lot of the habitat loss happened, they might have been places where they overlap, where the ranges meet. But as far as I know at the moment, at least in Kenya, they're, they're quite separate from each other. That's such a, it's such a beautiful bird. I would love to see that ground hornbill. Um, yeah, is there, amazing. are there any other questions for Sydney? I was trying to see if I maybe missed some, some in the chat. So I just see a lot of thank yous. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> they say everyone says beautiful birds. Everyone wants to go to Kenya now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> that was amazing.